So when I was in high school, my friends started to persecute me and tease me for my intentional friendships with um, the Cambodian Hmong Vietnamese refugees. So they started to call me nicknames like the Asian lover and just really started to persecute me. And somewhere in there in my immaturity with that and just the culture became so, I mean, I had no experience cross-culturally, so it became so overwhelming that I did sort of sever those friendships while in high school. Mm. But then I went on to Bible college. Missions, nothing to do with missions was going to get something along the degree of psychology. Um, and then one day while I was in Bible college, it dawned on me that, here I am in Bible college, I get the Bible in class, I get the Bible in chapel, everything's come, you know, I'm getting fed, 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 fed spiritually. And I felt basically spiritually obese because I wasn't putting it out. I wasn't sharing with others. I wasn't, as you said, doing anything along the Great Commission. Um, and so I prayed and I said, God, can is there anything I could do that I could apply myself as a college student um, around me that you see fit and it was the very next day after I prayed that that a, a friend college student came up to me and he said hey Gene how would you like to get involved in a certain ministry and I was like doo 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 because I had just prayed that the night before and I said well what what is it and he said we're pioneering um, starting a youth group made up of Southeast Asian refugees and it was almost like God was saying are you ready now and so I switched my major to missions. So I graduated with a degree in cross-cultural communications. And out of all those people groups, doesn't matter if they're neighboring countries, each one of them has their own distinct culture, speaks their own distinct language. And I felt like I could speak a little Hmong, a little Vietnamese, a little Cambodian, but I couldn't give my best to one particular group. So I chose one and that was Cambodians. And decided that I was going to go to Cambodia when I graduated from college. But you couldn't go to Cambodia. Cambodia had a history of a post-genocide. It was a communist country. It was closed. It was impossible. <laughs> and so I had this dream, but didn't know what to do with it. And then I just felt like God sort of taught me, um, it's, missions is not about a place, it's about people. In other words, why not start with the 4,000 Cambodian refugees that live around you in Minneapolis? Um, that's the place to start. You know, the calling is starting your Jer Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the end of the earth. So I committed to do that very thing, to get to know Cambodians and make disciples. And that led me to um, two days, a couple weeks actually, gra after graduating from college, um, found a Cambodian family of eight living in a one bedroom upper duplex um, and asked if I could move in and live with them. Um, so that would have made that made nine of us in they literally had a bed in the kitchen. That's how crowded it was. And I moved into that context um, because I wanted to do missions more incarnational in the sense of finding the most um, intimate nucleus of the society where culture is housed the most deepest and move in, live and learn the language and the culture and share Christ and make disciples.